So this video will show you how to operate an AFC, which is the new snow glide side edge only machine. Um, of course you want to safety first, right? You want to make sure you have some great eye protection. Even though the machine has a guard on there and you should always run it with the guard, you want to make sure that you wear your eye protection. The other thing is also like a painter's mask uh, is a great thing to have just to keep uh, the metal uh, shavings down and you're not breathing that in. You can also use your mask that you use for any type of waxing, which you should be of course using when you're waxing as well. So when you get started, again the beauty of the snow glide is that the weight of the machine is supported by the ski. But before you start, you need to make sure that you pull back the bumper on the edge of the ski. And when I talk about the bumper, it's really the lip that is just past the edge here where you have, usually have an aluminum layer on adult skis and then you have a little extra layer of sidewall there. You want to pull that back. It's not necessarily the whole chunk of the sidewall, which most sidewall planers do, but it's that edge there. Um, some of the sidewall planers with the round discs will cut that up cleanly as well. I prefer to use an SKS tool. Um, this is a tool that's got a little carbide bit on here. You can set the adjustment of that carbide bit and it really just allows you to pull back that material that's on that bumper. Um, pulling that edge back on there, usually I try to pull it back at like six degrees, uh, quite a bit farther than what I'm tuning at. This is also really important if you're hand tuning. Um, the files won't cut that nasty aluminum layer and it won't cut the fiberglass just above that edge. Uh, so if, uh, if you're not pulling that back, what's happening is, is your file is rolling up on your, on your uh, side edge guide and you think you're tuning at three degrees, but when it hits that bumper, it rolls up because it doesn't want to cut that. It can't really cut that. So just like uh, with, with hand tuning, you want to cut that bumper back for the snow glide as well. Once you've got that bumper pulled back, the great thing about the snow glide is that the weight of the machine is supported by the ski. So you're going to put your skis in your vices upright, just like you were waxing. Now you're going to take your power source and plug that in. I recommend that you put the power source toward the back of the bench and the fan here can even go sideways a bit um, so that it's out of the way and it's not sucking in any metal shavings. If you put the power source here underneath the skis, you're going to suck in some metal and you're going to just wear out the life of your power source a little bit quickly. Now you're going to take your power cord. I loop it through the back side of the ski underneath. You're going to plug in red to red and black to black. If you screw up the plugs, it's only going to allow the machine to run the opposite direction. So it's really not a big deal, but you want the stone to run counterclockwise. So that's why it's important to have red to red and black to black. You're going to turn on your power source. I put the machine at the back edge of the tuning bench and take my power cord now and plug it into the plug from here. You'll have to spin it around a little bit, find the groove once it slides in. Now you have this collar that tightens it so it keeps the um, power cord from popping out. So now we move to the ski here. Again, the beauty of snow glide is that the weight of the machine is supported by the ski. So really the way this works, it's uh, like driving a car. You have two different slides here. One slide will sit on the bottom. That's the only one you're going to be concerned with. You just want to take this and slide it up against the edge. You'll see the bearings here, that'll roll against your edge. You simply want to push that in. This is like a clutch on a car. Here I'm disengaged, you hear the stone isn't rubbing. And when I let go, the spring pressure pulls the stone in and now I'm rubbing on the edge. So again, disengaged, engaged. And then once you disengage, all you want to do is focus on holding your trays here. Uh, try not to push or infect the upper tray at all. Let the spring pressure do that on its own. So before you run, you want to just disengage and make sure that you're not hitting anything as you slide up and down. One trick is you want to roll your vise here out just a little bit farther than your end vices. This will prevent you from hitting anything as you're sliding the tool around uh, back and forth. So again, you have your angle finder here. So we're tuning at three degrees. So you simply roll this. There you're at 90, that's one degree or 89, two degrees at 88, three degrees 87. So we're tuning it three degrees today, so that 87 is where I want that dial to be. I have the power button on this side. So again, push the lower tray against the edge, pull back your clutch here from your upper tray. Now you're disengaged. Now I can fire up the machine with the plug with the with the uh, power button on this side. 
I can position myself where I want. I can let the stone come in as soon as I hear it grind. Now I want to just run it from tip to tail. Your cadence is about eight to 10 seconds per edge from tip to tail. Now I can disengage at the end and I can go ahead and come back and start over again at the tip. Again, as you grind, you want to make sure that you're only holding this lower tray. Let the upper tray be uh, alone and be pulled in by its spring pressure only. When you get to the end, you're going to disengage. Very simple. Shut the machine off. Wait for the stone to stop rotating. Then you can put the machine down. Now, your edge is ready, is really finished here. You just want to do some very simple stoning. You don't need to overstone with a snow glide because the finish is so clean and buttery here. This is why the World Cup guys use this machine. I like to use just the ceramic stone. So a very, very fine ceramic stone. This one is made by Spiderco. It's a double-edged st stone. Um, I use the white side, the very, very fine side. One pass on the base edge. Again, not a lot of pressure, just light light pressure on the back. Then I lay the stone on with no pressure. I'm not pushing, I'm just using light pressure. Just a simple run from tip to tail. That's all you need. Now you have a real buttery, buttery edge. Last thing, you wanna obviously dull your tips and tails to where you like them. This is obviously personal preference with most race skis. You should be pretty sharp tip to tail. Um, but once you've done that, you're basically ready for the final step was just taking your paper towel and just running the last little bit on the paper towel just puts the cream on the top here. Uh, just gives you that really, really smooth edge, knocks down any last little thing. Uh, so that is just a beautiful edge there, tuned at three degrees with the snow glide. Very simple as you can see. Makes a lot of noise, throws some sparks, but really in all reality, as you can see, very, very easy to use. You'll be an expert in about 20 to 30 minutes. Really, really simple.